All right, we're out here today in the cold. It's about 30 degrees. Uh, we got the steel target out there at 10 yards. That's 30 feet, measured and marked. Statistically speaking, if you get into a situation where you're going to have to draw your concealed carry weapon, it's going to be within that 10 yard range. So today I've taken the polymer 80, I've taken the front sight off of it, so we're basically shooting blind, and we're going to see if we can hit the steel target. I get the comments and the questions constantly on just about any video that has an optic in it. People always want to know if you can co-witness with this gun and those sights or that optic or this adapter plate. Look, I get it. We all came up using iron sights and using a red dot on our concealed carry weapon is a relatively new thing. There's this trust factor that a lot of people just haven't had the time and experience to be able to build yet. That's what this co-witness stuff really boils down to, and it's trust. You either trust your equipment or you don't. You want to be able to still use your iron sights unobstructed in the event that your red dot takes a shit and stops working. We use this rationalization where we talk about how, you know, we'd rather be prepared for all situations and all this. What if my battery dies? What if the dot just stops working, loses zero? What if the glass gets broken? I have to be able to use my iron sights or else my gun is going to be useless in a must have situation. So I've got my polymer 80 here and what I've done is I've removed the front sight from it completely to go ahead and make a point in this video. What I'm gonna be simulating at the range is a total breakdown of my sighting system, an absolute worst case scenario. First off, I haven't been training with this gun in a long time. It's probably been at minimum four months since I've shot it. More than anything, I've been training with my Hellcat Pro. Uh, that's what I've been shooting the majority of lately um, since I picked that gun up. It's been my full-time EDC, so that's what I've been shooting. The Polymer 80's basically just been sitting in the safe. So the Polymer 80 may feel you know, comfortable and familiar in my hand, uh, but it's not like the M&P or the Hellcat Pro where um, I have been shooting those guns regularly over the last few months. Of course, now with the front sight being removed, I have no real way to aim other than to point, shoot, and hope for the best. Keep that in mind and let's see what we can do with it. All right, it's cold out here. Let's head back to my office. Let's warm up a little bit and let's talk about why it is that all of this focus on co-witnessing is really just a waste of energy. Not bad for not having shot this gun in months, having no working sights and it being about 30 degrees out that morning. Statistically speaking, the vast majority of times that somebody who's concealed carrying is gonna have to draw their weapon and use it is going to be within that 10 yard range and that's 30 feet. Now sure, we all know this story or that story where, you know, this person or that person uh, had to draw their gun and take a shot at 50 yards or whatever. And yeah, that's cool. I get it. But let's not completely dismiss the data. Realistically, the data shows that if you can hit your target within that 10 yard range, then you're on the right path. That's not to say that you shouldn't practice for further distances. Just know that if shit hits the fan, chances are it's going to be within that 30 foot range. Anything past that and you run the risk of it not being a defensive situation anymore. Of course that's between you, your lawyer, and whatever state laws it is that are applicable. Furthermore, when that adrenaline hits you, the fact is you'll most likely find yourself just pointing and squeezing the trigger until either you run out of ammo or you've eliminated the threat in front of you. 
Now, I'm thankful that I've never had to use my weapon. There have been a couple of times where a situation has seemed like it was going that direction real fast. Luckily, things went a different way. I've seen countless interviews and spoke to a number of people who have actually been in that position where they've had to use their weapon in a self-defense situation. The general consensus is that adrenaline tends to take over and it's really hard for you to actually keep your composure and aim. Most people point, squeeze the trigger till the situation's done with. If you don't believe it, watch some police body cam footage. Even most police can barely keep their shit together during a shooting incident. The point that I'm trying to work toward here is that if the day ever comes that you actually do have to pull your weapon and use it, the chances of you actually thinking clearly enough uh, to register the fact that your dot isn't functioning properly and then switch your focus over to your backup iron sights and line up your front sight to your target to your rear sight and then take your shot the reality is that's just not going to happen i think we all need to be a little bit more honest with ourselves about this stuff instead of focusing so heavily on whether or not sights are going to co-witness i like to do two things first off i don't use any bullshit off-brand questionable red dot that doesn't have a proven track record of durability. Now it's one thing to put some sort of cheaper off-brand optic onto a gun that is basically a safe queen that only gets used at the range. When it comes to an actual concealed carry weapon, I'm not going to risk it. I'm either going to go with an RMR, a Hollow Sun or Delta Point Pro. Those are my top three picks for a carry gun. And to be honest, I'm gonna lean more towards the Hollow Sun, and I've got a lot of reasons for that, but that's a whole different video altogether. So buy a red dot that's trustworthy and keep up on your battery changes. Second thing I like to do is practice shooting blind or with no sights at all. Of course, you don't have to remove your sights or anything like that. I just pulled them off of the Polymer 80 to make that point specifically for this video. You can do standard dry fire practice at home. When you do it, just focus on your target. I've got a post-it note here in the office for doing dry fire practice. Um, when I'm standing there doing my dry fire drills, it's about 10 feet away, roughly eye level. Of course, I make sure that my weapon isn't loaded and there's no ammo even accessible here in the room. Once I'm satisfied that my weapon is in fact unloaded, I will go ahead and draw from concealment, put it on target, squeeze the trigger just like any other dry fire practice. When you put in a certain amount of time, you know, a certain number of reps, doing dry fire practice, everything starts to become more natural. Everything's more smooth, everything's more accurate. You're gonna find that when you draw your pistol and you press out, you're, you're naturally going to be on target already. You're not gonna to have to make any course corrections. Put in the reps with dry fire multiple times a week. When you start feeling really comfortable with it, head to the range for some live fire practice. When you go for your live fire practice, stay focused on your target. Don't even look at your sights. Draw your pistol, Press out and take your shot. If you have put in enough time, enough reps with your dry fire, you should be able to hit your target within an acceptable range of accuracy, especially within that 10 yard range. One of the reasons that a lot of people do dry fire practice is to get used to the motions, going for your gun, drawing it from the holster, pressing out and being on target without having to move around or change your aim at all. Anybody that owns a gun and carries it realistically should be doing dry fire practice regardless of anything else. Now, if you can train your body through regular practice so that when you draw your pistol and press it out, you're already on target and you can consistently do that same motion with live rounds, taking real shots and doing so with an acceptable level of accuracy, then what use is co-witnessing your sights really. Look, I know this opinion is gonna piss off a lot of people. I do. And sure, some people will unsubscribe. And yeah, I fully expect a flood of dislikes and shitty comments. I don't know what to tell you though. There is plenty of statistical data and first-hand accounts that are gonna back up the idea that you're wasting your energy on co-witnessing. 
and you should spend more time practicing to fire your weapon with no sights at all. Now, if you wanna have that perfect co-witness with your iron sights through your red dot, that's cool, you do you. I just feel that there is way too much emphasis right now being placed on co-witnessing, and there's almost no understanding or discussion of the real life situation that you're gonna find yourself in if you ever do have to draw your weapon. Do we wanna be prepared for any situation that arises? Should we be training and practicing for all possible outcomes? Damn right we should be. Just don't let yourself get so hyper-focused on one specific area of things. You may find that you're overlooking the most common real-world situation that people find themselves in. If your ability to use your firearm hinges on how well your iron sights co-witness through your red dot, ask yourself these two questions. Number one, how well do you really trust your red dot? And number two, are you doing enough training that mimics the reality of a real world situation? You can like this video, you can hate this video, it's okay. For me, I'm not gonna waste any energy on the idea of co-witnessing. I use a good quality red dot that I actually trust. I keep up on battery changes. I regularly take it to the range to confirm that it's zeroed. I constantly practice my draw both at the range with live rounds as well as at home doing dry fire. I'll put a piece of tape over the emitter on my red dot to simulate the fact that there's a failure. Then I'll put several mags through my gun just so that I know what to expect. It gives me a better idea of where my rounds are gonna go if I have a catastrophic failure, if I draw my weapon and I have no functioning sight system, or if my adrenaline is off the charts and I'm not able to pull my shit together enough to do any real aiming. Cause you know what, that shit happens. Putting co-witnessing so high on the priority list as what I'm seeing lately, you know, it's just a little bit out there. But you know, we all have our own thoughts and views and opinions on, you know, what's important and what's not. For me, co-witnessing is on my list of things that aren't important. I'll take training with no sights over co-witnessing any day of the week. Who knows what could happen? Your dot could go down, your iron sights could go down, and then what are you gonna do? Okay, that's it for today. I'm sure I ruffled a few feathers, but that's okay, it happens. I'll see everybody back here real soon.